welcome to the improveyourpool.com World 8-Ball Pool Championships. We're in Blackpool and it's the men's quarterfinal stages. With me to look at all the action today, the captain of England, Lee Kendall, who better to analyse the quarterfinal stages. First question though, Lee, why analysing and not out there? Well, I didn't make it through this time. I lost to a good player from India, so it uh, wasn't for me this year. Is the competition getting tougher each year? You've been around it for a few years now. Yeah, there's a lot of young players coming through and uh, every time you, you used to think, well, I'll get through to this round quite easily, but now you've got so many good players, you could get beat by anybody, really. And Gareth Potts also out, so, like you say, a couple of really good players already out of the competition before the quarterfinal stages. Yes, it can happen. That's, <laughs> that's eight-ball pool. That is eight-ball pool. Well, let's take a look at the quarterfinal stages as it stands at the moment. We've already had one match, of course. Mark Selby already through 9-4, a cracking match that to start the quarterfinals off. Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Selby, snooker professional, a very good win there, 9-4 over Ben Noonan. Up next, Chris Melling against Mick Hill, that's our next match, and of course Carl Morris, a former champion, up against Tom Ford, and Jason Twist against Darren Appleton. Several players you know well there. Yes, you've got a, a very good last eight into this uh, year's World Championships, but this match here between Chris and Mick is the first time they ever met on TV, so it's something we've all been waiting for for a very long time. I was going to say, a real buzz around the auditorium today, because this could be a real humdinger. Two very fast players, and two players who don't give an inch on the table. Yeah, it really is a toss of a coin who could win this match. All right, well, let's take a look at the two players closely now. Chris Melling, of course, seeded third. Last 16 for him, Clint Lawson uh, through there. Sanjay Patel, he beat 8-1 and uh, got a bye from the, the first round. Yeah, it's quite easy pass through for him so far. Too easy or not? Do you like it when it's harder? Uh, you like to have a test, just to just test your bottle a little bit, but um, he'll be quite happy that he hasn't been pushed so far, but I'm sure he will be pushed in this match. And what about the 26-year-old Mick Hill, the machine gun, as they call him? Yeah, he's one of the few players to win every event that which we've ever played in eight-ball pool. Recently been over to America and won a tournament over there, so he's in good form. Who would you call this one for? Who's going to win it? Thanks very much. I don't really know. It really is a toss of a coin. I'll go for the form player in Mikhail, I suppose, but it really is um, very hard to call. OK, it's going to be tight, I think, this one. Very tight indeed. The quarterfinal stages, and it's all hotting up. Your commentators once again are Jim Weish, Sean Baker, and Mick Delahunty. But first, it's, of course, Scott and Dave. It is now time to play some pool, so please welcome, introduce him first. Seeded number eight at these championships, ladies and gents, 2004 World Eight Ball Champion, the one and only Mick the Machine Gun Hill! And his opponent today, ladies and gents, seeded three at these championships, World Masters Champion. Two times world champion going for his hat trick. Ladies and gents, put your hands together for the magician, Chris Melling. A stiff breeze is blowing in Blackpool. The only piece of advice I can give you is do not nip out for a cup of tea. You're apt to miss a half a dozen frames in this one. The lag, all important to initiate the breaking sequence, and the break could well be a determining factor in this match. It is that close. Two former world champions, most recently, of course, that man, Mick Hill, won the event back in 2004. And just to the right side, I see a man probably as versed in this game as anybody, Sean Baker, the chairman of the English Pool Referees Association, and Sean. They say it's going to be close. What's your tip? Well, First this is a match everybody's been point. waiting for since uh, they got through to this stage. And I'm going to tip Chris Melling. Um, only for the fact the guy is absolutely buzzing this week in this tournament. He has hardly made a mistake in any frame whatsoever he's played. Does anyone exude confidence more than Melling? We see the break off here from Mick Hill. He's had to change his brake slightly there. He's going from the side of the table with his hand on the side rail. But he's made a ball. It's been successful. For me, Sean, it is all going to be about the break. Yeah. Um, if, if the balls are splitting well and they're making a ball, you see a replay. Um, this is just going to be a pot fest. It's just going to be a question of Mick Hill's broke off in the first round. It could go all the way. And Mick will win on the decider because purely that he broke in the first round. Got a hold serve and he's elected Reds. And right now, Mick Hill 
has to try and establish a little bit of confidence, settle into this match in no better way than by taking the opening rack. Also like to welcome into the commentary box a seasoned veteran of this world eight ball pool former Australian team captain and uh, boy you'd love to be out there wouldn't you Mick? Well yeah I'd love to be out there Jim I, uh, I don't know if my nerve would handle it these days actually I think the seasoned veteran thing's probably a good call but uh, geez what a break from Mick it's, uh, these reds look pretty easy Well Lee Kendall at the top of the program alluded to the players getting younger and better and here's two guys it's almost like they've been around forever yeah, well, I first came here in 95 for the first time I played in these titles, and uh, these two were pretty young in those days. They were playing juniors, but the last few years they've won you know, three of the last five world titles, I think, haven't they? They've been fantastic, actually. Well, I can tell you that Melling is the senior at 27 years of age by one year over the man at the table, Mick Hill. No strangers to the television cameras either. No, uh, Mix recently won the European Professional Championship that was televised, and uh, he's actually now equaled Chris's record of five TV titles. They've now tied, so um, this match, as I say, Lee Kendall said they've never met on TV before, so this could be a decider in that uh, who gets the neck out in front on the TV titles race. And nobody in recent history had, has hoisted the world title three times. Melling is bidding to become the first. Yeah, um, Chris had a chance yeah, last year to uh, achieve that feat, but unfortunately he was taken out in the final by Gareth Potts. It was an excellent match. I had the pleasure of being out there in the middle to referee that one. Massive start this for Mick Hill. Stepping his authority on right. this quarterfinal. He takes the opening, the opening frame here, 1-0 over Chris Melling. Mick, a delightful start for Hill. He knows only too well that Melling will be firing back, but at least he's off the mark. Well, I think you alluded to it, Jim. Yeah, this could just be a pot fest. It, the guy who broke first could be, end up 10-all and win, well, 9-all, isn't it? First to 10. Could be, easily be 9-all and Mick with the last break. But, geez, uh, I've been watching Chris the last few days get to this stage. I'm amazed when he doesn't go game every... When he puts a ball off that break, he goes game. So he was my pick, but, uh, geez, Mick was pretty impressive that first frame, wasn't he? Down to Melling to reply. Also on the World Snooker Tour. A terrific cumin. Second frame, Chris Benning's Quite break. often. Trading one it's hard to get that smile off Chris's face. So here we go. Frame number two of a possible 17. It's a race to nine. Melling with the ball in his court. And he's come up dry there on the break. And it was a Open ball that did it, the middle, right middle pocket, but it stayed out. And Mick Hill is now back at the table with a chance to uh, extend his lead. And here we see the break off shot break is just going to be so vital in this match. If one of them gets less balls than the other, it really could be the deciding factor. They pot so beautifully. Get position. Reds look very good here. Yellows look very good as well. It doesn't really... I'm assuming he'll go yellows, actually, but uh, geez, I think he could go game on either. 30 seconds. I guarantee that Melling will have taken notes, and uh, you won't see him break from the same spot the next time he comes to the table. No, it actually looked like he took some off the break there. We saw in the first quarter final that Ben Noonan was really lashing into the balls and they, don't, they didn't seem to yeah, be getting the ball when he did that. And when he, the next frame, he took a bit off the next time he broke and uh, he made a ball. So it could be that, that that's the way this TV table's playing. You don't really need to absolutely go into 100%. You can just take a bit off, make a ball, and uh, hopefully you'll be taking the frame. You say Mick Hill stood in the table, he's taking his time. You do find Mick does this when he's playing. Takes his time. Once he's made up his mind which way he's going, he gets on with it. Hill came into this event, the number eight seed. 
Melling, the number three seed. So on paper, you have to give the edge just to Chris Melling. But as we've said so many times, the game isn't played on paper. No, you're quite right, Jim. Um, I actually had the pleasure of refereeing this Mick Hill's last 16 match. Got him into this quarterfinal against Adam Davis. And he started off really well. He went three, four frames up on Adam. And Adam's hardly had his hand on the table. Um, and after that, they sort of almost traded frames. Well, he stopped the cue ball right where he wanted to. I wonder if he didn't think the other yellow might have been on. But this certainly looks like it passes. Now, could it be a tricky eight? It certainly doesn't go over the other side, Jim, and he looks like to have a bit, he's, excuse me, looks like got a bit of angle here and his white ball's just leaving the black bed. Uh, he, tried to, he tried to pinch the pocket there and Red dig into the cue ball and uh, that, mark that down on your scorecards, folks, because that could be a turning point in this match very early. Yeah, I think we'll just have to give Mick a little rest here, Jim, while he puts his teeth back in after that last bit of commentary. But uh, unusual there. You better mark that one down. That is a safety shot from Chris That's Malley. Super. You'll see them about once every 50 years. I'm glad we lived long enough to see one. Well, I think Mick will have seen a couple, actually, Jim. Yeah, well, certainly Chris has now got the advantage in this frame, hasn't he? Mix had a bit of a dip at that. Look at the spin on that cue ball. It stopped on a spot and uh, done its roundabout. There's a bit of a lash at that, Mick, there. He's, he didn't, didn't really see that he could uh, play a safety, so he, he's had a go at that. Yeah, you saw the shake of the head, though, too, Sean. He knows he let one get away here. It would have been 2 0 in front with the break. That would have kept the hammer down on Melling. Looks like Chris has played another safety. Well, that's it. I can't believe that. Two in the same frame. It's incredible. Total snooker. I think he's just trying to make sure. Well, I thought that when uh, Mick had played that shot, he came out probably as well as he could have. He never left Chris anything easy. And Chris is doing nothing more than to just buy himself a better chance. Yeah, I think he's just removing a couple of the balls that were on the cushion just to make the out easier when he does go. And once again, he's not left anything easy for Melling to get started. Yeah, so he'll probably just lay another snooker on him. Yeah, the one thing you've got to be a bit careful with, we've seen this happen before in TV matches, players keep doing this, and eventually the player who's in the snooker will get out the snooker and pot the ball by a fluke. Total snooker. And leave himself nicely on the black and uh, they pinch the frame. And that's what can happen in these games. Certainly. the skill level of these guys. You keep on giving good players extra shots and they do take advantage of them, there's no question of that. But he still has to be a bit lucky, doesn't he? Chris has played a reasonable safety. As you said, Sean, ooh, very close. Anxious time there for Melling out of his chair to see the path the yellow was taking. And this is a guilt-edged opportunity now for Chris. She can't see him holding back any longer, can you? And by the same token, Mick, I really can't see him failing here. No, they all look pretty simple. Now that he's got the one ball on the cushion, this was the one he had to get onto properly, and he's played it beautifully to get right on it. Just held for the red in the middle, and certainly should be an easy out from here. Yeah, you know what you say, he didn't take any chances with that. But at other times, you might see him just try and pinch a little bit, and just made this shot a little bit easier, because the cue ball's tight on the rail. But he didn't take any chances. Knew he did, probably didn't have to do anything with the cue ball with that shot. And he's left himself on a nice, simple out here. And a real turn of events because it was Mick Hill with the first opportunity in this frame. And Melling is going to burn this one into his memory banks. He was certainly back on even terms, but uh, Mick had the opportunity here, didn't he? So it's just one missed, as you said, Jim. And you see a shot there, Mick Hill. He's not returned to his chair. He wasn't obviously very happy about that shot he's played. And the simplest of eights for Melling to open his account in this quarterfinal. 
And there's your confirmation. Just as one would have expected, nothing between these two. 1-1 one, one in the race to nine. And Chris Melling has to be feeling pretty happy about it because 2-0 was staring him right in the face here. But the miscue from Mick Hill forged the opening. Here's a look at it. Just trying to pinch the pocket, digging into the cue ball a little too much, and then it was pretty much left a chance after that. Like you say, and that, he, he almost got that right. He only had to have been a fraction more across there, and he could have potted that yellow, and he was on the black. Quick look at the pack. Third frame, Mick Hill to break, one frame all. 26-year-old Mick Hill readies himself for the break in frame three. Deadlock 1-1 one, one with his good pal Chris Melling. And as you will have alluded to already, Sean, these two know each other's games inside out. Well, yeah, away from the TV table, Jim, these guys have played each other probably on numerous times. UK tours, um, other professional events and non-televised stuff, so... Like you say, they know, he's, they know each other's games inside out. But, uh, and Chris is super confident. I was talking to him earlier on, um, before the match, and uh, he said, as long as I'm making a ball, he said, I don't care what, what anybody Red else does. Inside. He says, if I can make a ball off the break, I'll be winning the title. He certainly doesn't miss much, that's for sure. I don't know if there's much to know about their games, is it? It's just pot out every time they walk to the table. We've seen in this year's ImproveYourPool.com World 8-Ball Championships the emergence of some new faces, young faces that have made their way through to the televised stages. The winner of this match in particular will be facing one of them, well-known in snooker circles, and he's making a mark in 8-Ball, Mark Selby. Very impressive in his win over the young Australian Ben Noonan. You, know, you talk there about the young talent coming through. I mean, guys who got knocked out by these two players in the previous round. So you've got Adam Davis, who hails from Stoke-on-Trent. Another one off the Stoke-on-Trent production line, following Gareth Potts and Lee Kendall. Um, they've got a couple, couple of other guys there waiting in the wings as well. James Croxton, who's a very good snooker player. And young Liam White, who was the England junior captain this year. And uh, they've definitely come through, say, off that Staffordshire production line. And the other guy who got knocked out, Chris Mellon, was Clint Tyanson, the legend as he's known to his uh, fellow players. But uh, he's certainly an excellent prospect for the future. And he could quite easily become, be the world champion in two or three years' time. Mick, a very timely reply from Mick Hill, isn't it? And one that he really had to have to erase the memory of that miscue. Yeah, well, I think it's a really good reply from Mick, actually, because he must have been a bit, well, a little bit tense after the, the miscue, the shot before. In fact, really was a bit lazy, average position on the yellow before last at the end. But this has been a beautiful finish. Doesn't have a full pocket here. Oh, what a great effort from Nick Hill. Just the bottom half of the pocket available, and he slots the eight in to once again take that one-frame lead, 2-1 over Melling. Emotion was checked at the door for this match. These players make it look like they're at the practice table. And this time, Melling enjoys success in frame four. 2-1, he trails McHill. Uh, it looks like he's made at least two red balls there. I'm not sure if he made a yellow as well. Just a quick look at the table as we see the, the replay here, the break shot. So again, he's, he's taken a little bit off there. It looks like he may be starting with a plant. If this is the case, it's very missable then, Jim. Now it's a good shot. Has tied those two reds up a bit. There may be some work to be done here. I think they're probably the bottom one. There. I, think, I think you're right, Sean. They actually do still go into that middle pocket the way he's queuing up. Looks like it's the bottom one of the two maybe that he's going for here. 
Can't quite tell from a camera angle, but uh, here we go, yeah. Definitely the bottom one. Got that in. And this look now looks a fairly simple out for Chris. There's not too much uh, to do here. The one beautiful thing about Chris Mellon's game is if he does get out of position, he gets back into position. So easier. Well, he's made a mistake there. I think he can just get through to the red, to the left center, but this wasn't the intended red. No, I think he would have liked to have just clip that black as he went past, Jim, just to open the red down this bottom right pocket. Got some work to do now. Red in the middle with a lot of bottom side cushion. The bottom cushion try and get over and knock that black out again. And he's missed it. And it's all gone amok right now for Chris. But a ton of side spin played into the cue ball there. And this red does not pass into the left center. May go off the yellow that's highest on the table. Nothing easy here, though, whatever's on. Either way, it looks like it's going to be the aggressive option. Can't see anywhere where he could run for cover. 30 seconds. Is he playing it off the yellow? That's what I think he's doing. I think he's tried to. He missed the yellow. It's surprising, actually. Obviously, there was room because the red went between the center pocket and the yellow. Yeah, and I think he's had a little bit of luck there. I think he's blocked that yellow to the left-hand corner pocket, as we see here, the replay. And he's definitely gone to play off that yellow. Missed it by a fraction. He's probably a bit stiff. There wasn't much of a gap there, was there? It's like he's developing that yellow out off the... One of the, the lower one of the two on the left hand side, yeah. Trying to get the snooker Maybe behind trying the, to lead the snooker as well. Yeah, it's a great shot. A great containing shot from Mick. He certainly thinks he's going to be coming back to the table soon. Although he did find his chair in the end. Not many options here for Chris goes across the table and hits the red he's just going to open the black up which is uh, he's looking to go up Sorry. and down the table maybe look, yeah 30 he's seconds to go up and down the table here click the left hand side of the red as we look as he's pointing to with his cue oh, and knock it in I mean if he plays he plays a shot like this and gets this it's just it's incredible absolutely incredible he's got to hit just before the center pocket on the right hand side didn't quite work as he intended People are clapping, but once again, you don't think he's left a really easy shot first up. Certainly trying to work out what options seconds. he does have. Well, you heard our referee announce 30 seconds. Sean, they've got to play within a restricted time allotment, don't they? That's quite correct, Jim, yeah. In this uh, rule set, you only get 60 seconds to play a shot. You get a warning when there's 30 seconds remaining. You have, if you haven't played it, it'd be two visits, and something that a lot of players don't realise, it's also cue ball in hand. So on a normal foul, the cue ball stays where it is, but on a time foul, the player can have cue ball in hand. And that's uh, been an expensive mistake one or two players have made over the years. I think you remember Daz Ward doing that a long time ago in these World Championships, and uh, it nearly cost him a match. He was trying to get that red below the yellow. So now, McHill might well take the aggressive path. Thirty seconds. Well, that didn't work out as planned. He's bumped that red even closer to the bottom yellow. He's probably a bit unlucky, Jimmy. He, he certainly played the ball off the red to open the black up for that pocket. But uh, the red going back to the yellow has made it a difficult finish now. You just see over his left hand shoulder there, look, look in the crowd was Jason Twist. He'd be looking on with uh, interest. He's actually in the bottom half of the draw. Yes, he's up against Darren Appleton. That'll be our fourth quarter final. And that presents quite a prospect as well. Those two titans of the game will be locking horns. There's well, the twister. Mm. You say he's a two-time world champion. Twisty never tends to show too much emotion on or off the table. 
He's another one gunning for his third title, of course. He's, uh, he could create the record this year, and it's certainly not beyond him. He's one great player. Again, a good containing shot from Chris, but... This isn't exactly the start we anticipated. I mean, everybody was talking at the top of the, the match of a, a pot fest, and it's not happened. We're seeing here with an extended bout of safety play. Extract a mistake from Mick Hill, but it's going to have to be a glaring mistake. It will, because even if Chris could get in behind those reds somehow and, and leave Mick in a snooker, he's got those three yellows sort of set fairly central to the middle of the table, and he's, 30 he's, seconds. he's not going to... He'd be extremely unlucky to miss one of those getting out of a snooker. You see there, Chris is just trying to weigh up where he wants to try and leave that cue ball to leave it as awkward as possible to, for Mick. And he's going to have to get on with it now, because we've had our 30 second call. Uh, he tried to get that red just out into the open slightly. Great effort this, though, from Chris Melling. One more luck. He's yeah, certainly mixing the box seat still. Like He's, uh, Chris is just hoping for a mistake. But these are crucial shots these players are playing right now. Hill looking to go too clear. But again, he is not developing the situation in any way, shape, or form from his perspective. I saw you shake your head a little bit there, Sean. Were you... Uh... Yeah, I was just trying to understand what Chris is trying to do here, really. I mean, what, what do you think about this, Mick? I mean... I think Chris is, at right at this moment, he's just trying to hope that Mick will leave him a cut on the red that's out a little bit with an opportunity to knock the bottom one open. But if he opens up that bottom yellow for Mick, he won't get another shot. So right now he is just playing very much a containing situation. And, yeah, Mick's waiting for his opportunity just to get that yellow out, I think. So right now there's, Chris is hanging in there. And Mick's just waiting for the opportunity. I'll tell you what Chris has done now, though. He has moved that red out into the table a bit. And if he gets the right angle, he could quite easily run into that red and yellow. And that's a, that's a typical Chris Mellon shot, that is. Develop a ball. And uh, it would give Chris an opportunity. Now, does he have an angle here? Well, that's the key. To try this. It'd be a, a thin cut on that red. Into the right corner. It'd be nice to, uh, if he could possibly play it and get enough bottom on it and screw across to the side cushion and back out and knock the red out. But, uh, gee, not it. No, he hasn't had enough. It's just too thin. You know, so well, that, was, that was the idea, I think, there of Chris. He's moved that red out to try and manufacture an angle to get seconds. into that red and yellow. But if he can just get this close enough to the hole, right, but that yellow's still very safe, I think, so... More, the closer Chris gets this to the hole, he can use it to knock the other one out if he gets an opportunity later. Oh, he's gone for it. Surprising. I actually thought he'd got himself back into this frame. Yeah. He's given it away with one shot. Well, I think you might have just seen the first mistake by Chris Mellon in these World Championships this year. Because I can't think of any other times he's played a shot like that. I think that was a bad shot. That was a mistake. That was... Oh. And that's an even bigger mistake from Mick Hill. I can't believe he's missed that yellow. I mean, he seems to think he's had a kick because immediately Chris has asked for the cue ball to be cleaned. You know, so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because this ball barely threatened the pocket. Watch it again. That, I mean, that never threatened the corner pocket. That had to be a kick. It certainly looked that way, but uh, I think these two might be a bit worried about each other, actually. It just seems to be a bit of tension early in the game. Great match, and... Great match up, and they have so much respect for each other that you can just see a few things going wrong here. Never easy to play a friend. Well, no, because again, I was talking to Chris earlier on, and he was telling me, I said, uh, Well, what did you do last night? Quiet night. Chris, he said, Oh, no, we went for a few drinks, myself, Mick, and one or two of the guys. So they were actually out having a, a pint last night. 
with one another. And uh, like you say, though, it's a massive amount of respect oh, for each other. I and wasn't that, sure that was going to drop. Well, that's wiped its feet, that is, on the way in. Anxious moments all around here, and even the eight struggles its way into the pocket. But in the end, thankfully for Chris Melling, it drops 2-2 two -two the score line here. Edge of your seat stuff. Frame five. And Mick will be looking to try and erase the horrid memory of how he lost frame number four. 2-2 two -two the score line here. He's come up dry again, Jim. He's having a little shake of the head here. We're going to see the break-off shot again. They say you see a yellow is hitting the middle jaw there. I think there's another yellow. It was, looked like it was heading maybe towards the pocket and got kicked away by a red. Where's the cue ball? You know, they always the say in any field. sport that you've got to live in the present. And I think that's what Mick Hill has to try and concentrate on now. I mean, we've only seen four frames in this match, and we probably have seen as many mistakes as we thought we'd see in the whole entirety. And uh, for me, what Mick Hill has to do is put that away. That's past. He can't change it. He's got to live in the moment. Yeah, I mean, and, and Mick's, I say, he's, he's a winner of five TV titles. So he knows what it's all about being out there on the TV. And he, he's a sort of player who can erase that. I mean, in the recent European Professional Championships, he found himself 5-1 down to Phil Harrison. And he'd not done anything wrong in that, and he, so he knew that he could get back into that game. But, as you say, we've seen more mistakes in these last four. We've, we've seen that, you know, as many mistakes in these frames as we've seen uh, in the whole championships. Like I said a minute ago, I just believe that these guys have so much respect for each other that maybe they are a bit nervous. As great a players as they are, we all feel the nerves out there occasionally. And I just feel like these guys are not scared of each other by any means, and the standard will certainly lift. But that's what Fireworks will definitely fly in this match. It's just a matter of when. I think what you'll see is if you, if you see Chris Mellon get two or three frames in front, you'll see then the Chris Mellon we know will come out he will start running around the table after these balls, and that's what he does. Um, again, a couple of years ago, he played Kevin McCallum in a frame, and from saying red balls, he was going to take the reds, it was 27 seconds till the black disappeared, and it was six balls plus the black. In that time, he actually he just flew down the table. I just stood back, I was refing, I just stood back and watched him. Didn't need to move. Well, when Melling starts to fly, that's all anybody can do. Just sit back and enjoy it because you're seeing one of the best that has ever played the game. And that's just perfect. I think a little bit of angle on the yellow. His white will just hit, just creep towards that black ball once he puts the yellow. And you run it up the cushion. Well, not as easy as it could have been. Time out. Again, I think he's asked Jason Davis, our referee here, to clean the cue ball. He's not quite happy. I think he's just... I don't think he wanted the cue ball cleaned here because of anything. I think he's just taking that little bit of time just to compose himself for this black. He knows it's a big shot. Experience, Sean. Definitely. Having been there before and knowing he was going to be there again. But this is very missable. As you say, he has missed it. He's given Mick a chance here. Not easy. Not an easy start here for Mick. And a glimmer of hope in frame five appears for Mick Hill. Just has to play one very good shot, as you said, Sean. First one's very 30 important. seconds. He's playing the safety again. Scary thing to do against this young man. He tends to find ways to get out of these snooters. Well, I'm looking for a path to that eight. And he's already had a look at the top right corner to see if he could play the jaws and over. And I don't think that's available. But even the two cushion, side cushion, and top as we look, bottom as we look, isn't available. He's got a deep mass say this. Watch this. This will be spinning like crazy. And not near enough. Foul. Two visits. 
I don't think he's gone in. It's no, a very good see. It's there. Sorry, Sean. A very good safety by Mick. Obviously, uh, left Chris in a position which was very hard to get out of it. And uh, now, with two visits, he should finish pretty easily, one would think. Yeah, yeah I mean, sorry, Sean. I was going to say that's just how tough that uh, that escape was. Yeah, but to be fair, anybody who's been to a Chris Mellon exhibition will see him masse a ball round uh, the triangle or around the end of a, a rest or something like that over a long distance. And I half expected him to get that because that was the sort of shot. You know, he was capable and he would seem to be a long way away with it for it. Now, whether it's this different cue ball that they're using in these championships, I mean, I've spoke to quite a few of the players and, and many of them are saying, well, we've played with it quite a few frames now and we're quite happy we can just get on with it, you know. Well, certainly the spotted cue ball, the choice of champions. And it's become very familiar all over the world in all disciplines. Yeah, it's uh, just a, apparently a couple of grams heavier than the, the normal cue ball we would use in England. As I say, most of these top players seem to have adapted to it now. Oh, now. But what a learning tool it is for our folks at home to be able to see how these top players apply spin to that cue ball and the amount of spin that they apply. Yeah, we saw, saw one or two shots in an earlier match. Well, you say you'll see that the, the cue ball actually stops on a spot and then spins round like a spinning top. And you, that's the amount of uh, side that's being put on it by these players. Using his second visit, playing it very softly, was never in danger. And Mick Hill is going to survive a scare. To and fro, the five frames that are in the books. They just seesaw backward and forward. 3-2, Mick Hill currently enjoying the lead over Chris Melling. A 3-2 scoreline. Chris Melling to break in the sixth of a possible 17, and that is not what the doctor ordered for Melling. Straight into the side pocket. Open table. And a glorious opportunity it, presents it. itself for Mick Hill. Watch it again. Let me see there. That, that's a classic mistake there. It's gone straight into that middle plate. Oh, it's all right. It's had a little nudge off the yellow. But I think it was going there anyway, Jim. And I say, and, and that's a classic. It is a mistake on the break shot. I mean, I'm surprised a player of Chris's calibre has done that. I think Mick is probably going to try and take yellows here and maybe develop that yellow and red that are stuck together. I think he might actually be playing the yellow no, onto the yeah. red. 30 yeah, seconds. you're right, Nick. He's changed his mind and moved it over. Opens the reds up. The only thing about that now, he's just nudged that red back onto the side. Well, you say, a little shake of the head from Mick there. A little mutter to himself as well. Yeah. I think you're right, Sean. I think the yellows were probably the better balls. It just needed to maybe pop the one in the middle and then develop those two rather than... Well, I'm pretty sure that's what he was trying to do to begin with, because he, he put the cue ball over on the right-hand side of the, of the bulk area, and the left-hand side as you look from the bottom end of the table, and all he had to do is flick the yellow in and get the right angle to disturb the, re the red and the yellow. I still expect him to finish here, but he has got some work to do. There's no question of that. Does the red go off the yellow in the middle? This is well, the I think it does, and what he's done is left himself probably in a position now where he can finish this frame. He'll get in just above maybe the middle pocket or around the vicinity of the middle pocket to play the uh, red down the rail. And he may even leave that ball to last because the black will go into the opposite middle pocket and he won't have to do anything with that ball down the rail. It's a good call, Sean. He just, uh, just needs to get on that one that's uh, around about the blue spot on the snooker table. It's the, it's the other one. It doesn't go into the other middle. So he's just got a little bit of work to do to do work all these out, just play good position, but uh, I'm sure a player of his caliber will work it out. So many options though. 30 seconds. These players demand perfection from themselves. And that's what all the practice is meant to produce. Yeah, it's a great, great shot. It got on the, the red I was talking about now and he'll just, as you say, land on them. You pop this one, play the one up the top near the pocket and then Roll the one down the cushion to the black in the middle. He said that so easily, Mick. 
Yeah. I'm surprised you're not still out there. <laughs> Mate, I've never missed one from back here. I nearly went in off a black from back here once. The white ball just sat on, just sat on the left. Uh -huh. obviously a very good weighted shot then. <laughs> Well, I saw a little pat on the lap from Melling there, but you know something? This doesn't look nearly as easy as it could have been. He's not going to be able to drop right behind that red just to the left of the cue ball as we look. No, he's going to have to go the other way. Yeah, he's got to take the difficult yeah. one now. Yep. They're not quite on fire on all cylinders yet. There's no question of that, but oh, it's another miss. It's unbelievable, actually. Yellow ball's in play. Yeah, he just seemed to be uncomfortable all the way through that that visit he was never quite getting himself exactly in the right position where he wanted to be well I ha I'm sorry Sean I, I have to say that I, I think he was trying to take Mick's path to victory here and uh, he just didn't finish on the red over the pocket ideally he couldn't get close to the red that he elected shooting and sometimes you know when you're shooting a ball that you're not completely committed to playing and there I think you saw Mick Hill half-heartedly go at that red. 30 seconds. Changes your mindset, Jim. There's no question of that. And he really didn't play that red anything like as well as you would have expected him to. This is the big shot. Yellow up the cushion. And gets This is pretty simple. Well, the first three frames look nothing like what, what we saw Mark Selby produce in our first quarter final. I mean, he never put a foot wrong, in fairness. His yes. opponent, ben, New, ben Noonan, played terrific and uh, just had no reply. But here, plenty of opportunities both ways. Yes, you can't see either of these being Mark on this form, can you? No, definitely not. But whoever gets through, it'll be a totally different game then. It'll be a new game. Well, and, what, and what does it say, Sean? Never says how, just who. The score sheet only shows a tick, doesn't it? Live to fight another day. You see there on his cue action there, you can see it's a sign of a snooker player there, Jim. He's got a very long um, cue action. A little bit of a pause at the end there, and he just strokes through nicely. And that, that cue action has never changed in years. I remember watching this guy as about a 14-year-old up at Manchester, the Junior World Championships. He looks no different now than he did then. We might have put a couple of pounds on, that's all. He's put a couple of pounds in his pocket, I'll tell you that much. Good eight, good clearance from Melling. Back to 3-3. Three, three. Nothing in it between these two. Well, we thought it would be a pot fest. It's turned out to be a spherical game of chess by the looks of things, Lee. But weirdly, uh, we were talking here, Chris Melling is the one making the mistakes, not Mick Hill. Yeah, I mean, Mick just made a mistake in that last frame, but the other two was one was a kick and one was a miscue. But Chris has made two fundamental mistakes, so uh, he'll be the happier two to be three all. You said you didn't want to call this one at the start, didn't you? Um, are you any wiser now? No, I mean, now it's going. You, you'd think Chris is going to win it because, you know, he's just uh, getting more opportunities at the moment. Commentator's saying that perhaps there's a little bit of nerves out there between these two, that they know each other's game well, and they know it's how important this game is. It is, yeah. It's, uh, they both know they're both capable of winning the title, and that's probably why they're a little bit edgy. OK, well, it's all to play for. Three all at the moment, so and it's tense out right there on the floor here all. in Blackpool. Let's get back to our commentators. And tense in the com box. 3-3, three, three, Melling and Hill. Serving up a feast for us here in Blackpool. And now, again, Mick needs to try and make something Open happen. Title. And so often is the case when you need it most, it never appears. Yeah, it doesn't look the, the greatest of splits there either. I want to say that's not the way it actually is. You see, the balls did split well, but they've just um, stuck together again afterwards, particularly on the left hand side. I think le left, left hand corner pocket, we'll see in a minute. See there's two yellows and two reds together. Red ball's in play. This is when Chris is at his best though, Sean. He seems just to find a way, you know, screw off one of the reds into the other corner and go across and knock them out. He just seems to find ways to go game when it looks impossible. So I won't be at all surprised if he finishes here. No, I wouldn't. So I saw him play a shot, you know, you see how he's tried to disturb the balls and he's missed them. He's played the shot, I said he screwed off it, but he's somehow picked the gap between them, has he? Or he's gone above it. Whatever he did, he was a bit unlucky, I think. 
Chris sailed through his last two matches en route to this quarterfinal. An 8-4 win in the last 16 over Clint Ionson and a convincing 8-1 win over Sanjay Patel from India. Yeah, so as Mick alluded to, he goes for finishes. He's actually played a ball in the, uh, the Ionson match where he's got a red and a yellow stuck together up the table and he's potted a ball into the bottom left-hand corner and screwed back and massayed it up the table to disturb the red and the and yellow. Blacks and in. the blacks in. Now, loss of frame. Loss of frame, just like that. Melling misses the red, knocks the black in unintended, and it's frame Mick Hill. Jim, when have you seen a fella like Chris Melling miss a red that close to the pocket? I'm sure there is nerves playing a part in this match. Another look. The red missed, and it's the yellow that slots the eight into the side pocket. An unfortunate turn of events for Melling. 4-3 in favor of Mick Hill. Eight frame, Chris Melling to break. Trading four frames to three. So with a horrid memory in the preceding frame, Chris Melling readies himself to break in frame eight. 4-3, he trails. Red ball potted. And if he can get to the mid-session interval at 4-4, four, four, I guarantee you he will be relieved. Yeah, and I think you'll see a different Chris Mellon in the second half of this match. We see the break shot again here. Red ball again, took play. a little bit off that. He's put the red top left. It's a great break. Reds just looked all to be very easy, don't they? But the way it's been going, nothing's easy. No, because Chris Mellon, he's been a bit in a bit of a dream all week, the way he's been playing his pool. And he's turning into a bit of a nightmare in this game. But this is when champions can dig deep. Just onto the red in the middle next, and then the one over the hole for a pretty easy black. It should be a simple finish. And how badly did Chris Melling need this? I Time think he got a little kick there say, also. He's asked for the cue ball to be cleaned here, because you see that cue ball definitely stopped almost dead after it's contacted the red. And I think he's just looking to run through a touch. He certainly didn't mean, leave, mean to leave himself this close to that you yellow. See, look, you see how that red, Time that cue ball reacted after it hit the red. It's made this shot a little bit more awkward. Yeah, that's a good you shot. See, man. he's played that with a load of spin just to hold that cue ball. Eight right. frames in the box here from the Norbrook Castle Hotel in Blackpool and nothing between these two former world title holders. 4-4 four, four in the race to nine. Eight frames in it right now, and nothing to choose between these two. Finally poised at 4-4, effectively right, a best of nine Four frames for a place in the semifinals. But gentlemen, as we see Mick Hill breaking off, for me it's been more a case of what's been missed than what's been made. Yeah, without doubt, Jim. I uh, think they've both missed some shots we'd normally not expect them to have missed, but I think Mick's probably missed a couple more. So he's the one who the pressure's on right now, I believe. Yeah, he's come up dry on the break, as we can see the replay of it. He's had a look like yellow and that red old tried to make its way into the middle pocket, but he's been unfortunate. No friends on the break for Mick Hill. Both of these players, obviously, red balls in play. have been in front of the TV cameras. They've been to the business end of many events in their careers but they're showing us the pressure that only the world championships can provide. Yeah, I think uh, if Chris hadn't have been playing Mick at this point, he'd have potted about four or five balls by now, Jim. He's certainly taking a lot more time than you'd normally ever see him take at the table. Mick, we were talking just prior to this ninth frame, and, and you had very definitive views on how this match has unfolded. Yeah, look, it's, it's easy to have views from back here, as we alluded to earlier. I know how hard it is there, but um, I actually do believe that Chris has... He's missed a few opportunities, but I think Mick's probably had more opportunities, and 
the four all scoreline from Mick is probably I think he probably should be a little bit more well he probably should be 5-3 at least in front and I think he's got to get his mind right into gear right now because uh, it'll certainly be playing on his head I think it's so difficult to try and pull a positive when all those negative thoughts are swirling in your head nothing easy again is there no we see here Chris is having to, to work like anything on this finish nothing's easy there's no rollings on this he's going to the top right here by the look of it he's nudging the black and it's dangerous and you see he's now moved the black into a position where I don't think it'll pot certainly bottom right it won't go he's put the red on though I don't think the red was on before that so one negative one positive but you're right Sean that black isn't on not in that corner pocket anyway does go in the middle you just see now whether it'll it won't go in the corner, but say he was just queuing up there just to see if it would go in that middle pocket. And this red doesn't pass into the left center. No prizes for that. Yellow's blocking a clear path. So what bit of magic is Melling going to produce to get out of the mud here? Well, they do call him the magician, Chris Melling. And he's going to have to conjure something up here, I think. He's certainly looking, maybe taking the, the red into top left. But how is he going to clear that? Maybe look at trying to clear the yellow from yeah, below no. the black and then get the cue ball back out. But extremely difficult shot. Yeah, never mind getting the red. What about position to the black? 30 seconds has been gone. So. Well, you see as well, he just had a quick look up at the clock. We do have a clock for the benefit of the audience and the players, which shows the time that's remaining. It's a great got the red. Fantastic shot from Melling. Now I think the black goes in the bottom left, but it's just going to be a question of where the cue ball is going to go. One more look. It's a great putt, isn't it? What Into a, a blind shot. pocket. His line of sight away from it. Well, he's got to be careful here because this cue ball may cannon into that yellow and it's going to be dangerously close to that bottom left corner as we look. Fraught with danger. Well, he's overcut it. I just had to use a little back. bit of bottom on it just to avoid that kiss you talked about, Jim, and uh, in doing so, he's just missed the pot. A terrific red. Gave himself the opportunity, and he failed to capitalize. Now only a mistake will bring Melling back to the table. We see here, I think he just overcooked that. Yeah, he certainly like did. Say, but, uh, trying to avoid that yellow, that was the danger ball, because he could see just flick off it, and the cue ball finish in the corner pocket. Yeah, that's a great shot from me. As I alluded to earlier, I do believe he's a little under a little bit of pressure. If he goes game here, it'll certainly change his whole mindset, I think. I was talking to Trevor Baxter, our press official for the World Championships, and uh, he said to me during the break that he was talking to Mick Hill prior to the commencement of this quarterfinal, and in fact, Mick admitted to being nervous at the outset. Not something you, you want readily known, is it? <laughs> no, you don't want too many people to know, but oh, you'd be surprised if he wasn't, though. You know, it's such a big occasion opportunity to win a world title doesn't come along every day that's for sure yeah i think for many years mick was tipped from a very young age to be the world champion and, he, and he, i think it played on his mind for several years he kept coming here and getting knocked out in first rounds in qualifying rounds and uh, i think he just went away one year and said that's it i'm not having that pressure and he did that in 2004 and he uh, defeated his great friend darren appleton in the final on that occasion He's played this really well, and he looks, certainly looks like he's going to finish, doesn't he? Oh, that's a good shot. Nice steady cueing. And home and dry in the ninth frame. So the volleying continues here. The main stage in Blackpool. 5-4 in favor of Mick Hill. He holds serve. was Melling in with the first chance. One lax positional shot, really, even though 
a fantastic red. Gave Chris the chance. In the end, it was Mick Hill who got the last shout. Yeah, and that was the chance. Once again, that was that chance on the black. It's a nice clearance here from Mick Hill. As you say, he played a nice shot there. But what I liked about Mick's visit there is he was never in trouble. Everything was simple, controlled the cue ball very nicely, and made short work of the yellows. Still, you now he's had that look of concern on his face ever since the early frames. Tenth frame, Chris Meddings a break, trading five frames the to The best four. to 17, a race to nine frame wins, and right now, Mick Hill with his nose just in front, and it's Chris Melling to break in frame 10. I think just saw a bit more on that break from Melling, but you see that little hand movement Open he's made tight. there as if to say, what's going on? I've not made one again. And he's shaking his head for good reason. The Reds sitting ducks as we see one more look at Chris Melling's break. No friends at the table on this occasion. And dare we say it, for the first time in this match, every player, amazingly, in the nine frames that are in the books, every player has won his break. Is it going to change here? Well, it's certainly an opportunity for Mick, isn't it? I, like I said, I think he's had a few, but uh, right now, after the break, here's a real opportunity. Red Bull's in play. Put look, the black safe, hasn't he? Right away, look what he's done at the eight. <laughs> Just nothing really flowing for these guys at the moment, but uh, uh, he's such a good player, I still expect him to finish. He's well, just going to have to that, find a way uh, to get that, that did it, Mick. He's got no chance of getting out now. <laughs> you reckon <laughs> I've mucked him up totally? Uh, the famous commentator's <laughs> curse there, I think, Mick. You've done him. Uh, but no, he'll be right, see. I reckon. That's Black still goes in a few places. Still goes in the middle pocket. This was one of the more awkward reds that Mick's eyeing up right now. But obviously, it's all going to come down from his choice of last red on the table with which to attain position to that eight. Black Hatchie may be on in both center pockets, just from the little angle I just had a look at then. Well, if it does, this is a fairly simple out then for Mick. Well, Correct. Uh, Again, he's just made this slightly awkward. He's got to just to avoid that yellow maybe on the side rail here. So he's going to come down below it. Oh. And you see he's played the cannon yellow there. Play. Moved the black out, but he's missed the, the red. Why did we think he was going to clear up? Why should the storyline change now? Well, I think you may be right. I might have mucked him up. Chris there has played to disturb that yellow on the side rail, I'm sure he did. He thought he had the angle, and it's just, and they see the shaker there, there, Chris, and he's a little chat to himself. He obviously is not happy out there at all. It's just... Uh... Both players, when it looks like it should be smooth sailing, just make hard work of it. Neither one of them has got into stride yet. And we're our tenth frame into this match. I know it's not great from their point of view. 30 but seconds. Actually, matches like this are quite interesting sometimes because, uh, you know, it's a real tense battle out there. So it's not a bad thing from a, Mick, I, from I a think watching that, point of view. I think that's a very fair comment. I mean, these guys, after all, are human. It's a wonderful and, thing to see, actually. Well, they, so often we see them play and, and they look like they're robots out there. They just yeah. do nothing wrong. It's, it's nice for the people at home to see how difficult this game can be. Correct. Again, Chris, he tried to leave himself an angle on that yellow to disturb that one on the side rail, and he's not done it again. He may take this double on, I think. See if the yellow is on inside the red. He's now, would he try and just roll this yellow to cover the red? It looks like he's playing a safety. Doesn't want it to go in. Well, it's a good shot. 
fantastic shot. It's so easy on this TV table. Um, but he's just rolled it. He's rolled it onto the knuckle, as you'll see on the replay here. And it's quite easy for this just to get slightly wrong, and that, that yellow could have he quite easily finished in the pocket. Which would then have meant, of course, he would have had to have get, got the bad yellow out on the cushion. Mick's still probably favourite here. He just needs to move that red away from the hole, and Chris is still left with the bad yellow up the top left-hand cushion. But, uh, 30 seconds. Game of chess, as we alluded to earlier. Yeah, because the only thing, if he moves that red out of the way, it would give Chris an opportunity, if he could get up the table and behind that yellow, to play the plant down the rail. No question, it's nothing's easy here. He looks to me like he's coming down for a double. Get below the ball and try and double it back the other corner, but he's hit it too hard, so that no option, option is no longer available. Bit of an adventurous throw the gauntlet down. Just remove that bad red that he's looking at now, and still Chris Melling would have been faced with the awkward yellow, and Correct. now he's taken a red off the table and done it. Well, one less insurance policy. Yeah. Look, it's still not easy for Chris to finish, and that's still quite a reasonable shot in these circumstances. But you're right. The more reds you got, on, more balls you got on the table at this stage, the better off you would be if there were the reds. Chris has asked for the rest here. It looks like he's going to take this yellow into the bottom left. Well, the odds are he's going to have to finish on a double for that. He's going to have to bank that yellow into one of the corner pockets or the centre pocket. Time running. He's just looking uh, at something. Where he wants to leave the, the cue ball. In that right hand centre pocket. Didn't intend that. Now I think he's going to be left with little choice other than to try and roll into that yellow and snooker. Mick? I think that's exactly what he's going to be doing. Of course, Mick's now got options, Jimmy. You can just leave the white ball there. Give him t uh, two shots and make him waste the first one with still the bad yellow on the side cushion. Or he may choose to try and get out of it and pop the red up the top and finish the game. But the safety play is just to leave the white ball right there. I'm never convinced about that. I'm not uh, saying it's the right option, no. Sean, but uh, it is one option. Yeah, with players of this calibre, it's quite easy for him to make one of those balls. 30 seconds. And then uh, he's got that spare visit then to move that bad ball out. Foul. Well, that's a bad mistake from Mick Hill there. Two visits. He can't believe he's done that. One more look at what gives Chris Girl. Melling an opportunity. Chris still has work to do. The two yellows on the right-hand side look like they're going to have to be matured, but he's got two visits. I think he's just going to use waste a visit here and move that yellow out. 30 seconds. I think he's actually used, tried to move them with the white, and just not given it enough side. Second visit. Well then, this did not go according to plan. That yellow is nestled up on that bottom cushion. Melling wanted to have the angle on it to be able to dislodge the yellows on the right-hand side, and he's just overcooked it. Yeah, and I think if I was Mark Selby, and I was sat in the audience watching this game, I'd be thinking about a place in the world final, Jim. Because I'd be thinking, can we get to the semis right away? So I think he'd be hoping that even whichever one wins plays this badly in the next match, but it's not likely, of course. No, we, allude, we said that earlier that uh, whoever does get through this game is probably going to be mighty relieved and it's, uh, no, you'll see a totally better. different game. Yeah. It's like lightning striking twice in the same spot, isn't it? It doesn't happen very often. Well, I have no idea what Chris can do here. He's going to have a good think about this, but certainly doesn't seconds. look like there's an aggressive option anywhere that presents itself with these two. And remember, you've got to hit a cushion after contact. So it's going to be the plant, yellow, into the top corner pocket. That's all he could do. 
Yeah, I think he tried to leave the white maybe behind, in line with that black, in line with the two reds. He's just gone a little bit far and left him on the reds. So he did have two... I think he played both shots there. He tried to play a snooker behind the black at the same time, but just overcooked it. Yeah, so he's not got either of them. And this looks like Mick Hill. He's got a great chance here to open a two-frame lead. First time in this match. Scary moment there. And this for the two-frame cushion. And finally the sequence is broken. Mick Hill shouts first. Will he have the last shout? Only time will tell. 6-4 over Chris Melling. Well, if nothing else, Mick Hill gets himself into a little bit of a comfort zone here. Finally, two frames clear of Chris Melling. But it's fair to say he didn't do it in a streak of confidence. Is that great shot from Chris there into the knuckle? He was the bad miss by Mick Hill, where he's hit the black. And uh, say, I'm not quite sure what Chris tried to do there with his two visits. And this year, the host for the ImproveYourPool.com World 8-Ball Championships. It's frame 11. Open table. And 6-4, Mick Hill in front. And Melling strides to the table. You see there, replay the split. And here's it from the overhead camera. And Red ball's in play. He's just not made a, bro a ball again. And that's been the story of this, this match. Players not making balls on breaks. And so Mark Selby did say that in the practice room to me earlier, before his game, that he said it's more difficult, he found, on this the bigger table to make a ball on the break. He said if you do make a ball, Time out. then uh, you'll clear up. And Chris, again, is not happy with the cue ball. So he's uh, asked our referee Jason Davis once again to uh, employ his ball, make, ball marker and gloves. And there he is, Jason. And he's replaced that ball for Time Chris. Money. Has to be a sense of urgency about Chris's game now, though. Beautiful spin off the cushion. Certainly, Chris here. We'll be looking to get this frame straight back, the one he lost against the break last time. And he's certainly in a good position to do so. This red for the next one up the cushion. Well, that's it. Any other time, this would have just been a, you know, this is a regulation Chris Mellon finish. But who knows the way things have gone. Run right through so you can just roll this in for the black in the corner, I think. Massive visit, this one from Melling. One of the few shots of confidence that Chris has provided us with. Gets back to 6-5, and he will have the break in frame number 12. So two gunslingers, a little bit gun-shy perhaps there, but uh, finally Chris Melling definitely making uh, an important move there because 6-4, 7-4, then he's starting to worry, isn't he? Yeah, it was a big frame to get it back to six frames to five, but I think both players seem to be struggling with this new cue ball we're using. They're just uh, running out of position a little bit too much. Just so people understand, it's slightly heavier, right? Yeah, it's two grams heavier, so it's playing a little bit slower, so when they screen back, it doesn't come back as far, and they're just having to adapt a little bit, and uh, under pressure, you know, they're making a few mistakes. So definitely a few mistakes out there. The pressure is on here in the quarterfinals, and it is only the quarterfinals, but I think once either of these players gets through, they may just settle down, but it's still all to play for at the moment. And as you can say, Chris Mell in there, just checking the rack, and Mick Hill waiting for his time. Let's uh, join our commentary team to explain exactly what they're doing. I can tell you that Chris is having a real good look, just to make sure that everything is touching. They want a total disbursement of these balls. Well, the only way you get that break, is to have to everything touching. To and the spotted cue ball become very familiar all over the world. All players becoming 
acclimatized with playing with this new white and what an educational tool it is for the people at home watching. Well, I'll tell you what, Chris Mellon's had those balls re-wrapped. He was perfectly happy with them, and you look at this split. They, the pack just did not split at all in the middle. It was only the fact the balls have come back and cannoned balls that they've actually dispersed a little bit more than they were. But you've got a cluster of balls around the right-hand centre pocket. And uh, this isn't easy now for Mick Hill. Yeah, nothing but, easy here, is there, Sean? It's, uh... Reds look like the the best option because of the yellow close to the jammed in behind 30 the black. seconds. But once again, it's uh, nothing simple. I'd hate to have to try and pick a winner between these two. Certainly, Melling has yellow provided us tight. with a couple breaks and finishes. Now, I don't recall whether or not Mick Hill has, in fairness, but. Uh, First frame of the match, I think he went going. Yeah, that that break. might be it, actually, yeah. Mick. Now I think about it, and um, you know, mistakes coming from both camps. Well, Mick's taken the yellows. Uh, you know, I thought maybe the reds, but there's only one yellow needs to be moved. Like I a test, uh, said to a, about a minute ago, he just needs to find that a way of moving that yellow that's near the black. If he's able to open that up and promote the black and the yellow, then he should be finishing here. Yeah, I don't know if he was trying to leave an angle on this yellow into the bottom left here, and he could have just run into the. The yellow and the black, you see there, no, he's getting, he's looking maybe trying to get up behind that yellow. Certainly haven't got the angle to now to get into the black and the yellow. Say, the cube, the yellow into the left mid, left corner pocket. 30 seconds. Playing the ball in the middle off the bottom cushion and try and knock it down. There you go. Beautiful shot. Good shot, but uh, that yellow I still don't think goes into that corner pocket. I think it may pass left side, left centre as we look from our overhead perspective, but uh, either way, he's pushed it out into the open, Sean, and I think this is a great chance for Mikhail right now. And if it didn't go, oh! Well, I can't believe he has missed that. In play. He's thought too much about cannoning the yellow. He took his concentration off the primary objective and that knocking the ball in. Well, I don't know whether it's Chris Mellon's birthday, but he's just given him an absolute present here. Chris Mellon must be sitting there thinking, I'm going 7-5 down here in this race to nine. And he's just, it's just a total present. I can't believe it. Just drawing that back. Even there, he's just gone a little bit too far, Jim. He's, he won't have any problems, I wouldn't think, but certainly not where he wanted to be. He would have liked that red in the middle right then, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, we heard Lee in the studio alluding that uh, the players are struggling with this new cue ball, but I was speaking to Chris before the match, and he said it didn't bother him one bit. He said, now I've played with it, I'm used to it. He said, fine, it doesn't cause me any problems at all. So I think some of the players are... I'm not saying they're using it as an excuse, but um, it's certainly... Um, some, a lot of the top players are saying they're not, they're not bothered. He said they've played with it, they've got used to it, and that's it, we'll get on and, play, and do the stuff. And certainly all the guys that are still in the tournament, I don't think they're complaining about it. Well, that was the key shot right there, and nicely controlled the cue ball under the difficult red into the side pocket. And I say that simply because that was the only pocket it was available to. And that's an excellent shot from Chris. Great position on the black, and we've got a match again. He replies in time. Right. Mick Hill slotted two in a row. And Melling repays the favor. 6-6 six, six here in the World Championship quarterfinal. Just a shocking turn of events. We've said it earlier in the match, but watch this. Could you believe Mick Hill missing a ball believe. as simple as that? I just cannot believe he's missed it. It's just incredible. Had to have taken his concentration off because he's followed through with the cue ball to develop that difficult yellow. <coughs> but he has to be suffering right now. You see that little shake of that, the head again. Don't know whether it's possible to swim from Blackpool back to West Yorkshire, but you, you may see Mick Hill taking a little stride into the ocean. Well, it's a long way round if he does try it. But he's got the break. 
frame. 13 and Melling trying to gather his concentration and frame, focus himself with the task at hand. But it's Hill to break. Deadlocked at six apiece. Well, he's made a yellow and he also, almost, almost yellow made the cue potters. ball there. I think he's had two goals. It's actually top left, you see. It's going towards it. Comes back yellow out and then a yellow comes across and tries to nudge it in as well. Guys, is it me or do you just get the feeling that nothing positive can happen to the point for Mick Hill where he's going to embrace it? He just, he seems to be completely surrounded by negativity. It seems to be that way, Jim, but at no stage in this match is he trailed. Red ball's in play. <laughs> if it keeps on going along the same trail... And, and that's run. what he should be, he should be trying to focus on, Nick. Without I doubt. totally agree. Yeah. But there we see another miss from him. You know, he's got control because of the red that's tied up on the top cushion. But, yeah. Uh, well, you just saw him miss a long, difficult yellow. It almost looked like it turned on him slightly because he tried to slow roll it. Just wonder where it could have been a finger mark on the table. It's hit after it's contacted. It's, you know, a finger mark on the table. Sometimes the ball does move or, or it goes across a finger mark. But uh, certainly another potential mistake from Mikhail. Well, the reason he played that is the red at the top end of the table. You can see it sandwiched between those two yellows. That has to be developed. So what he wanted to do is gain control of that bottom left corner. Yeah, now uh, Mick's left with the dilemma of what to do about that pocket because he has to do something quickly before Chris moves the red you're talking about. He's just covered a hole, which isn't a bad option, but... Uh, the attacking option is with Chris. Well, certainly Chris is in front from my point of view. He can choose to do a number of things here. He can, uh, move the balls away from the pocket where Mick's just put the yellow over the hole. He can give him two shots by playing the red onto it. He's just chosen to move the balls out of the way. And I tell you what, Mick Yell has just been sat in Chris Melling's chair. I've just seen him appear from the left-hand side, and that's Chris Melling's chair. So I don't quite know what he's, whether he's thought... Well, I need to sit over here and take a different view of this game. Well, I don't know. But, uh, Can't be that confused, can he, Sean? I'll tell you what, Jim. You look at the two players between the last frame. Chris was sat there composed. He, there was no emotion on his face. Mick Hill was showing all the emotions of somebody who was struggling with his game. Fair and point. He... 30 seconds. Why not? Well, as you have a look right now, I mean, for me, slight advantage. Falling to Melling. Now that's the shot Mick Hill had to play. He's developed the difficult yellow, and instantly he puts the heat on Chris. I'll tell you what, has Chris, Chris Melling got an angle here when he pots this red just to disturb the red on the top rail? Well, that's how he was going to do it. Off the side, pushing off the bottom. Chris. It's a great shot. And it is a great shot because with having that ball over the bottom left-hand pocket, he'd always got a ball he was almost certainly to be on there. Correct. Didn't take a huge amount of time over that uh, double and has missed it by a long way, actually. Well, I can't understand why he's taking the double on. I honestly can't. There. He was obviously confident, but... Well, he needed to... That was the red that was going to cause him problems. He felt that he was on it then. But now Mick's very much in front here. But again, with having that ball that's near the top le left-hand corner pocket, he'd got maybe an angle, eventually, to get on it and get behind that red. Put and it in the middle it pocket. Again. Yeah, yeah, develop it. One thing is for certain, neither Mick nor Chris Melling made their way to the world titles they hold playing pool like this. Well, I'm amazed, actually. I just come here watching these guys. Every time I come, they just seem to find ways to go out from absolutely nowhere. And I expect Mick to go game here. It's, I'll probably put the mods on him again, as we call it. But uh, just so often I see them go finish from impossible situations. And uh, I'm always surprised when they don't. So today, this match has been a room full of surprises for me, actually. It's a very good shot. Yeah, we, t we talked earlier on about the difficulties of playing, you know, somebody who's probably such a good friend to Mick Hill. But Mick played Darren in the final, and he didn't show any mercy there. Yeah, I don't think it's anything to do with friends. I actually think it's to do res with respect of how good they are, actually. And I think that's what's happening here. I think they're just not scared of each other's ability, but they just know how good the other guy is. <laughs> they're scared he's going to turn it on any second. 
He just has to get on that. Well, it's easier said than done, but if you can get pretty straight on that yellow up the top, you expect him to finish here. Digging into this with bottom and spin. Lots of right hand side, and he's played it very, very well. He's got a reasonably good chance of putting well. I'd expect him to put this easily in normal circumstances. Nothing's normal right at the moment, but there you go. I didn't put the mother in this time by the looks of it, Jim. He's no, but he hasn't made the eight yet. No, well, I could still muck it up, couldn't I? Home and dry, but it's Mick Hill, Crichton, who has yet to relinquish the lead in this match. 7-6, but it'll be Melling to break in frame 14. Break and finish, here it is again. Frame 14, he trails by the odd one. And he got a ball off the break. Looked like he hit that with a little more conviction. Look at all the colors at the opposite end of the table. Ripples in play. He crushed that break. Yeah, I think uh, when we talked about he'd uh, taken a bit off the break, but he hasn't there. He's like you say. He's gone into a big star. He's called Reds with a lot of confidence. Yeah, what he's going to do, he's going to move that yellow out here. Oh, he hasn't. That's right, he moved the red that was just behind it and it's uh, made it reasonably easy, I think. He's obviously confident of getting between that yellow to take the red in the top right on corner pocket then. When he speeds up, his play noticeably improves. Well, if you look at this, this is probably going to be a break and finish in, what, a minute, minute and 15 seconds if he takes this out. And he'll be digging into the cue ball here. You'll see lots of backspin, or will he elect to leave himself long distance? Look at the spin on that cue ball. And look at the control. What a shot from Mellon. Well, an emphatic shot, and one that he hopes is going to take him across the finish line. What a reply. 7-7 seven, seven here in Blackpool. What a positional shot from Chris Melling there. As good as any we've seen. Yeah, you hear that when he plotted that black, you heard the noise level wet up in the audience. So there's obviously quite a few Chris Melling supporters out there. And they've not had too much to cheer about. And you've got to feel that that's just what Chris Melling needed. Absolutely, absolutely. That I mean, shot of adrenaline, eh, Sean? That's it, because if... Chris Melanie, if he gets to the table in this next frame against Mikkel, I could see him winning this frame without Mikkel having another shot. And look at this. Look at this cue ball spinning back for the black. All that backspin imparted into that white, clearly illustrated by those red dots. And Mikkel, frame number 15, down to crunch time here. In the quarterfinals, it's a race to nine. Gut check time for both players. And he's made a ball. He's made a red into the top right pocket. Whether he's going to look at going reds, I don't know. Nothing easy here, I don't think. Red ball's uh, in play. He's gone reds, and there's a very safe red up the top right-hand corner behind the yellow. So he's going to have to do some work. Well, if the alarm bells haven't gone off for Mick Hill after Melling's last visit, Nothing will. That might have just been the wake-up call Mick Hill's game needed. He certainly uh, decided he was going to take reds fairly quickly there, and uh, like you say, he's just got to look at trying developing that one poor, one badly positioned red for him anyway. And uh, if he can do that, could quite easily see him return the favour to Chris Mellon here with a break and finish. He's going to have to have some luck here, I think. It's, uh play this red into the left hand top corner with a lot of right hand side. I don't know if he can miss those yellows. It looks like he can go underneath them. That's oh, a good shot. He's not left himself anything easy. No, he could have had a fraction more luck, but uh, one good pot here and he's back back on a simple out. So he just has to play one very good shot. Chris Melling would have been down and played this shot already. 
for me, that's the difference. He's got to flick this in. Oh, a very and the cue ball tough to control. He has to have a bit of luck with where it lands. I think. Played it very, very well. I'll tell you what, he was extremely lucky there. He'd only had to just flick that yellow as it went past, and he'd have finished up behind those two yellows in the snooker. He's still not happy, but I think he's got the red in the middle and should be on the other red in the same hole. If yeah, he but I think the problem is he's, that cue ball's tight, fairly close to the rail. No, it's not an easy shot by any means, I agree with that. Not at 7-7 uh, seven, seven in the world semi world's quarter-final. Sorry. Missed it again. It's bottom jewel. I'll tell you what, it looked like it just drifted yeah, after he hit it. One more look. Just look after it. It looks like it's going to us there. It's just moved a little bit to the right as we looked at that. Now I think that's just a finger mark on the table. You talked about that earlier, Sean. You mentioned that earlier, as you say. I yeah. think it was missing anyway, but you're right, it certainly moved away from the hole. 30 seconds. But he isn't playing near the pace that we've come to expect from Mick Hill. Melling seems to have got the bit between his teeth now. And is 2006 going to be the year that Chris Melling wins his third world title here in the ImproveYourPool.com World Championships? Well, they're starting to uh, queue up for that. No, he's playing a, a safety, I he's think, here. playing a snooker behind it. There's no question. He's just making off it and playing the snooker. But you can't believe that he didn't get on the other yellow. It's just... I think he's concerned, Mick, about that, but that yellow on the side rail. He wants to develop that. And yeah. so he wants two visits if he can to try and develop. But the problem with this is that red is so close to the middle hole, he could quite easily just come off the double, make the double with the cue ball and knock it in. Absolutely. I think one question is whether the other red passes the black into the bottom corner. This is going to be close. He's missed it. Oh, he's missed it by a long, long way. And you saw him throw his hands up in despair. I think he's, he's quite nonplussed that he's missed it by that far, but uh, negative mindset, I think, more than anything else. Yeah, as we've alluded to so often, I mean that, in fairness, these players. That's incredible. Chris Mellon's gone for another double. Second visit. And he's missed it. Same as the last frame. Second visit in. Well, he can afford no more misses now in this frame. But I was about to say that at this level, there's no way these players should be missing. Well, I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm completely mystified by what I've just seen there. I mean, he got down and shot that. With two visits, he hasn't potted a yellow. I'm throwing my eyes away. I've seen it all. Well, I think, yeah, I've never, ever seen Chris Mellon have two visits and not pot a ball. Shocking. Mm. I bet the last time he did that was the first time he ever picked a cue up. And this eight to get to the precipice of the semi-final. And down it goes. Eight seven to Nick Hill. Right. Well, we're hearing a lot more hits on improveyourpool.com and uh, well they need to because watching that, uh, they're just proving there those two great players, three world championships between them. They're very tentative out there, aren't they? Yeah, there's a lot of mistakes being made out here, which is really surprising by the level that both guys play. But, um, you know, there is a lot of pressure out there, so it's... Uh, is it because who they're playing and they know each other's game so well? That's part of it, but I, I still say that they are struggling a little bit with this new cue ball. I mean, normally you see them play in this arena, and they, they, they're all up, they just clear the table up with no, no problems at all, but uh, they're just running out a little bit with the cue ball all the time. When do you see Chris Mellon miss two balls in a row with two visits? Very, very rarely. Well, it's all to play for and still very tight and tense, as we said all Chris along. Let's go back to our commentary team. Eight frames to seven. How on earth can Chris Melling erase the memories of the preceding frame? Two in a row he missed. All set to break. 
eight seven and obviously just unsettled something distracted him he's got to gather it and focus his attention very clearly outlined now two to play and Chris Melling needs them both red balls potties he's, he's made a ball yellow he's made two nice. balls he's, he's elected to go yellows already you see here the break off shot again in There's play. one thing, though, Chris knows, as do we. If it does go to a decider, it's Mick Hill's break. And we said that right at the top of the program, Jim. But uh, if it went to a decider, it's Mick Hill to break in a, in a pot fest. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we've not seen that in this game. We have seen pool, though, Sean. It has almost defied description. I imagine that after watching this match, we'd have to rewrite the dictionary of superlatives for a game. But I think we'll have to introduce a few new words, but they're not uh, superlatives. And I don't think anyone could have expected this, but you know something? It's all about pressure with a capital P. And this is a sign of a true champion. That he's come back now after that last frame. It looks like he's going to go breaking out to force a deciding frame. Twice in a row when he's needed it, it's been pretty good stuff from Chris Wimper. Once right. again, the reply comes from Melling. 8-8, eight, eight, and it will be Mick Hill to break for a place in the semifinals. Well, Melling can offer a smile right now, but I can assure you, he's praying that he gets the chance in the 17th frame. And there's your handshake. Sportsmen and friends to the end. They were both smiling there, and they had the handshake, but I'm sure Mick Hill is now praying inside that he makes a ball on this break. His last break off, cue ball flew in the air as well. It just shows that he'd given that extra punch. Frame. Mick Hill's success rate when he breaks has been astonishing. Only once has he lost a frame when it's been his break. Here we are. 8-8. Eight, eight. Everybody on the edge of their seats and holding their breath. And I don't think anyone would dare predict the outcome here. And I'll tell you what, look at yellows. Uh, yellows look all over the place, don't they? They look very easy. I Nothing think he knows. At all. He knows. Just look at that look. That he just that look on his face, I think he knows. It's over. There's a little nod of the head there. Melling has never seen the lead in this match. Yellow balls in play. But if you ever want to see the lead, it's at the finish line. Exactly. There'll be no, uh, there'll be no pictures on this scoreline. I'd like to have a monitor on his heart rate. You'd probably wonder how he was standing. Yeah, he's looking at one good shot here now. But again, when he gets his tail up, the misses may have come, but he maintains that speed. Yeah, and I guarantee Chris Mellon will come out of this, and if you talk to him, he'll say, well, it doesn't matter now, I'm through. I'll That's take Mark Selby. And he's played there, Cannon, to try and nudge that red out of the way. Has played fantastically well a couple of times when he's been down in the last little while. A couple of good dishes off the break. Yeah, it's a big shot here. Beautifully played. And if he rolls this in, he's sure to finish on the black. That's a big if. He's held himself together at the most crucial time. Melling sees himself through, but not before taking out his buddy, Mick Hill. A 9-8 nerve-wracking victory for Chris Melling and Mark Selby awaits in the semi-finals.
Well, without a doubt, a gritty performance there by Chris Milling. And uh, watching with me, Lee Kendall, uh, that was tough. He never led that match and just needed to lead at the right moment, which was that last frame. Yeah, he got the important one. He got the lead at the very last frame, and um, he'll be relieved to get through that match. I know Mick Hill will be kicking himself. Does Mick Hill deserve that? Because, as I said, he did look tentative out there, but did he make less mistakes? Well, I think both of them made mistakes towards the end. It was just a case of somebody who was going to have to hold themselves together, and that person was uh, Chris Bowling. OK, well, it makes it interesting for the semis, doesn't it? We've seen uh, Mark Selby in great form. Let's have another look at the quarterfinals draw at the moment. 9-4, Selby went through. He now will play up against Chris Melling, and that'll be an interesting semi-final. But Carl Morris up against Tom Ford, and Jason Twist still to come against Darren Appleton. It's shaping up nicely, Lee. Yeah, it's uh, certainly been a great lineup, and there's been some great matches, and that was uh, the pick of the one so far, 9-8. Can you see Chris Melling now going through all the way? Well, it's a mouth watering uh, match now with Selby and Malin playing each other in the semi final, so I'm sure there'll be a packed house for that one. Okay, well, that's it from Blackpool at the moment. There's plenty of fun fairs here, and that was, without doubt, a roller coaster ride for Chris Melling, but he's through. We'll see you next time.